specifically for English language learners as my passion as an immigrant and language learner myself. Uh, that's where my heart is. Come from a family of educators as well. And what brings me joy um, is cooking um, and dancing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I didn't know you came from a long family of educators. That was news to me, but I know you are a great dancer. And it's been just such an honor to learn so much from you over the years and the impact you've had on your school district as a coordinator for instructional technology, deploying Google Apps. I remember when that first kind of came out and that was a huge feat, correct? Yeah, it was. It was, but it was the right direction and we're happy we did that. That's awesome. And, you know, I think what beauty uh, life presents us, then you became uh, the global program manager at Google. So your passion for creating effective solutions and driving positive outcomes for learners, educators and organizations is quite evident. And I'm so thankful you're here today to radiate that same passion to our flipped learning community. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for ha having me here. It's an honor. Awesome. So up next, we have Jen. Hi, everyone. Hey, friend. I'm so glad you're here. How's the weather in Canada today? Um, today, it's, what, are, what are we at here? We're at 20 degrees. Now that is Celsius, not Fahrenheit, so don't panic. Um, and it's raining. It's cloudy and rainy, but that's okay. We'll take it. We'll take it. Yeah. Well, you know what? You bring the sunshine. So tell us a little bit about yourself and something that brings you joy. So I'm Jen Giffen. I am a teacher librarian from just north of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Uh, Canada. And I've been in this role now, I think it's my fifth year. Before that, I was um, a digital literacy consultant for my district, which is quite large, 125,000 students there and about, about nine or 10,000 teachers. And then I, I call myself a recovered high school English teacher. Um, before that, I did high school English, a little bit of math and uh, special ed student services for 14 years. So going into my 23rd September, we're not back at school yet here in Canada. We don't start for another couple of weeks. So um, that's, that's sort of where we're at. I'm outside of education. I'm a wife. I'm a mom to three boys who are 13, 11, and 11. So it's a loud, noisy house. I, you know, you're not going to hear them now because they're downstairs on their iPads. But, um, and not, my family brings me joy, of course. But I also, what my my current joy is probably going out on walks in nature while listening to an audio book. The librarian and me can't can't get away from my books. Awesome. And you know what? I'm so glad you mentioned that wellness piece. So educators, mm -hmm. take that tip from Jen. Get on your walking shoes, put on an audio book and take care of your mental health. But Jen, you have been an inspiration to me for so long. And even before we became roomies during our Google Innovator cohort, I don't know if you remember this, but I learned how to color code my online files from you on the Google Teacher Podcast. And that was like seven years ago. So shout yeah, out to long time. Matt and Casey. You remember that moment? Yeah, well, absolutely. I remember when Matt um, sent me a message on then Twitter, now X, um, saying, hey, would you be interested in being on and falling off a chair thinking, oh my gosh, Matt Miller knows who I am. And, and they're, they're reading my tweets. And this is very exciting. So and that, that you know, that power of, of connection um, is is great. I remember you and I hooking up for like the, the mystery guests, mystery hangouts, mystery, you know, um, Skypes and trying to get people to figure out where in the world we are with our, with our students. Too. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, we, we go back, you and I. I forgot about that one. So thank yeah. you for reminding that, reminding me of that, because that's what we do now on Flip. We want students to be able to connect with others in so many different classrooms. So Jen, throughout yeah. the years, you continue to be an advocate for technology, empowering mm -hmm. voice in fun and creative ways. And I was so lucky to even visit you with our team on our bus tour to Toronto, Canada. So I appreciate yeah. you sharing today with our beautiful community. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to talk to both you and Natalia. Awesome. So our viewers, if you haven't already, hop on over to the chat, share where you're watching from, give a shout out to your school district and share something that brings you joy. We want to hear from you. We're going to get this conversation started. So Jen and Natalia, you both, as we just heard, are such experienced educators with both Flip and Google suite of apps. So I want to know, what do you personally like most about Flip's interactive video platform paired with the possibility of Google tools? And I'll throw this one to Jen first. 
So one of the things that I, I've done when I'm in the classroom, um, when I was using Flip and that I've encouraged a lot of other teachers to do is to create a Flip topic um, called like my inbox at the top of Google Classroom and just pin it there as a topic. And whenever students, you know, they it's not always in real time with our students, right? We know this, like things come up even in our mind, like, oh, I need to talk to that kid about that. Or, oh, I need to ask my teacher this question. And we have emails, but sometimes it gets lost in that. And we, we know we have students who, you know, are TikTok generation and they like to make the videos and this and that. So I use it as an inbox. What happens, we sort of click something on. I even have it in my library. I have a, a QR code there because, you know, we don't, I don't have a classroom for, um, for the library, but it lets students go in and leave me a virtual message. I'm the only one that can see it. I moderate it. And students can leave, you know, in right now in the learning commons, it's, you know, they leave feedback on, you know, something that we uh, programming that we've done or requests they have for books. But when you're in a classroom, it could be a question. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm working on this assignment right now. And I need to really quickly ask my teacher a question, but it's like one in the morning, I teach high school. So they're up and, and I, I want to put that in right now. And so they'll leave questions and then I can get it in the morning and it's, it's sitting right there in Google classroom for us. And you can, you can see, and to me, that's so important because everything can be lost in translation in a, a message on Google classroom or in a, um, in, in a, like just a, an email. And I love too, that you can do the share your screen. So they could be working on something like I'm stuck here and they go to the share the screen mode. And that's part of the message that they leave to me in real time, rather than I had something last night with that assignment that I was working on. I don't remember what I was going to ask you. And that has to come to them. So that like real time feedback to us as educators from them, I think is, is amazing. I love that. So educators, what we heard is we have a topic from Flip that's pinned inside of Google Classroom and students can utilize the share the screen feature so that the teacher or the teacher librarian doesn't have to figure out where the problem is. Students can actually show you. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Jen. You want to add on to anything, Natalia? Yeah, I think that that's a great idea. I didn't even think of that. That's a really awesome idea. Super helpful for teachers. The other thing I was thinking of that I've actually seen some of uh, the teachers that I work with uh, do before is uh, specifically around the possibilities for English language learners. So I told you guys, that's what, one of my passions. Um, and the cool thing about the things that I like about Flip essentially are three things. One is how easy it is to use for students. There's literally like, I don't know, your engineers and your user experience guys who are like, we're going to make something that is super easy to use and doesn't need a manual to, or, or training guide. And the kids are just using it right away. So for someone who's a newcomer or English language learner in one of those beginning stages of learning, uh, it's very easy to use. Um, also, it gives it the, the number two is gives the, the students the possibilities of uh, being able to practice their language skills, specifically speaking and public speaking um, in a safe space where um, students are not having to speak in public um, to the entire class, right? That is sometimes really overwhelming, especially for someone who's shy and learning about their uh, the English language, right? And so um, teachers have the opportunity to have those um, practice speaking skills um, through flip videos. Um, and then the other thing that I, the third thing that I, I really like about um, flip is that it's the videos are so interactive and engage, engaging for the students because it has the stickers. It has all these other different things that kids can use their creativity and add on to the video to make it even more engaging for even their own peers and for the teachers. So you're not, not only feeding the creativity in that aspect, but also they're wanting to do it because it's engaging and it's fun and they don't know they're practicing their speaking skills. So that's those are the three things that I love the most. Oh, those are great ones. You know, I'm, I'm so happy that it is a tool that someone can pick up and figure out, right, without having to read much about it. Um, you know, but I think you, you made a really good point when it comes to the student creativity aspect. You know, all of our students come with experiences and ways to express themselves. And sometimes by them doing it on flip, it unlocks new possibilities for us to be able to know what are our strengths that our students are bringing to the table? What are the things that they absolutely love to do? Where does their creativity lie? So um, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yeah, you get to know them a lot better too. 
Oh, for sure. Now, you know, we all dealt with COVID-19, um, but I know one beauty that came out of that time period was that we learned as an educator community that learning can really happen anytime and anywhere. So can you maybe share a specific example or story of how maybe FLIP supported either a FLIP learning model or during that time frame where kids and educators were not in the same physical space um, that either had an impact on your school community or on the lives of students. And we'll start off with Natalia this time. Okay, so, well, it, FLIP was instrumental in uh, during COVID. Um, we as a district leadership and uh, all of our, um, you know, educators and head of different departments sat around and discussed like what would be the best way for our to engage with our students to be able to see them because um text in an email doesn't really show a lot of emotion but when you are recording yourself in a video your facial expressions your gestures your like body language your intonation all of it brings a lot of meaning to what you're saying. And so we wanted to use Flip as sort of the official platform along with Google Classroom because A, it integrates so easily. They really did a fantastic job of integration with APIs. And so it's so super simple to use both platforms. Uh, and so we use that um, as an official platform with Google Classroom. And one example I wanted to share that was really um, endearing to me and I was really um, eye-opening too, was uh, the support for social emotional, uh, not only learning, but for, you know, the way that we want to see our kids thrive in school. And that was the counselors and the counseling department was like, well, we're going to create a safe space for our students uh, because they can't really talk to us live right now as they would. They would come to our office and, and you know, have a chat and they can't do that right now. So um, they created a safe space uh, for the students. And this happened at the high school. It was super successful. Um, students were really into sharing um, their thoughts and their feelings with the counselors in a private space that Flip was able to provide. That's incredible. And if, for those of you who are watching who might not know, we have a moderated um, feature where those videos are private to the educators. So um, thank you so much for sharing that. And Pathway example, that can happen whether you are in in-person learning, remote learning, and that, that private space can be there for any student and for any reason. Um, Jen, what about you? What, what did you see during that time frame? Well, we had, we, you know, when we were in lockdown, obviously we weren't together. One of the things I loved when I was teaching in that point was when we their flip videos, they would have, I would see their background. So I would see a little bit into their life because a lot of the students in secondary had their cameras off. So when they were filming, I could see, you know, oh, there goes, you know, like me right now, my cat sitting behind me, right? Like I would see the cat walk by and, and to be able to glean into their life and build that into the relationship that you have with your students and be like, hey, I've noticed through videos that six of you actually have cats and or dogs. And you know, you have pa parents that might walk through, or I see posters for this this musical artist. Or I thought that was really um exciting. We also did a really cool thing with our cooperative education department. And they this is you know students going out and doing work and getting credits for it. Um, to learn like what they might want to do when they're finished with secondary school, like as they're applying into post-secondary. And we started doing our co-op interview that used to be live and used to be pretty short and a lot of pressure on our students, particularly, you know, as Natalia mentioned, our English language learners um, or students with learning disabilities or exceptionalities, right? They also have this like, oh my goodness, what am I going to say? And, and they're, they're potentially you know, overwhelmed with anxiety in this in this point uh, anyway what we would do is instead we would put prompts into flip and say okay answer these questions and then when they're done their interview that was then asynchronous and synchronous was there and a lot of our students started like using tools like google slides to be like okay i'm going to use i'm going to create some slides they're going to be my background i'm going to be down in the corner and they're going to talk about why they want to get into this law firm why they want to work at um, this daycare for example and then the the co-op teachers loved it because they could all you know all together really they present themselves well and they're great but then they could also use those videos with permission from the students, share them with placement opportunities. So you can 
here's the kid coming to you and look at how great they are. And they could really sell the student to the organization where they wanted to be placed. And it did really great jobs for a lot of our kids, particularly those who want to go into really competitive placements, like in hospitals and such. So, and, and even once things, you know, we were back in person, we didn't have to, they've continued to do that because they see the benefit. And it also can help students add to their own, you know, portfolio really early in their, their, your career journey to be like, I have wanted to be an architect forever. Look back at this video that I created for school, right? They have that. It's And it was really, really empowering. And a lot of them used a whole bunch of different tools. Um, Like I said, like with Google Slides is one example to be able to really enhance those videos. It was really powerful. Oh, yeah. So I want to hear from the educators in the chat. How many of you have assigned Google Slides, you know, to your students? You know, almost any classroom that I've been into Students are either individually or collaboratively working on those slide decks. So what a beautiful way to pair it with Flip. So now students can give voice to that slide deck that they've worked on, right? Even for a collaborative project, a lot of times that slide deck is submitted, but also you as an educator want to know individually the perspective of every child that worked on that slide, right? They may have different perspectives of how they are approaching uh, the same content. So um, really great ideas and a, a great smash between a uh, flip and Google Slides. Now we know this is the beginning of the school year here, at least in the, the Western hemisphere. And we know many educators are learning and deciding what tools they wanna use um, this year in their classroom. So what are some practical tips that you can offer to educators who might just be starting to explore the integration of Flip and Google Classroom or other Google tools and how can they get started effectively? I think my biggest thing for that is let them play, right? You turn on all the tools, all the stickers, everything you can do. Because a lot of those, for those of you who are new to Flip, can be turned off. You don't need to allow the stickers. You don't need to allow, you know, all, all, all the bells and whistles don't need to be there. But the kids love that. So let them go in, have something really low stakes. Like put a would you rather question up. Like, would you rather have a cat or a dog? And explain why. And have the and go in and be like, as be as creative as you can be. And, you know, they can use the stickers. They can import photos. You know, they can have their own. They can maybe do an interview with their own pet. If they're like, well, obviously I want a dog because look at how cool my dog is, right? Um, but let them play when it's really low stakes. That way they're not like, oh my gosh, I'm getting assessed on this. And what if I don't do it right? And oh, this screwed up. And now I'm stressed because I don't know how to use this tool. So using it in a way that's not even for any kind of assessment, but just for community building at the beginning. So they learn the tool and they can have confidence in the tool. So when it comes time for a higher stakes activity, they're really confident. I think I think that's paramount with using tools like this. Oh, I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. And I think I wanted to add to like, that's um, an outstanding example for like getting the students comfortable. But I think also teachers who are new to flip, that's another way that they can start. Low stakes, like you said, Jen, that's perfect. And one of the things that I uh, used to tell teachers is, you know, don't be afraid of exploring the tool. You're not going to break anything, really. A and then B, you're also going to be able to learn how to quickly and super easily integrate Google Classroom with Flip. So one of the things that teachers did was um, they created, like you mentioned, a topic in um, Flip, and then they would share it in Google Classroom. And um, very easily, the kids can actually like log in into Flip, into Google Classroom. They see the, the quick um, activity. You don't even have to make it an assessment. It could be just an activity and then the kids can go and do their flip and then come back to Google Classroom and submit that. And it it sounds like it's a lot of steps, but it really isn't a lot of steps. And the kids are, I've seen it with students. Um, and like I said, these, these products are very intuit, intuitive. And so the user interface is super easy to, to do. And I've seen teachers use it as well. So my, my tip for, for them is to try to use the API integration uh, specifically when you do an assignment or when you do a um, a post. And I think, Jernay, you're gonna probably going to help us out and show us a little bit about that. Yes, we'll have a live demo of that a little later. And, you know, I absolutely love what you said because, you know, I think as educators, we try to think about how can we effectively 
uh, do things together. And these integrations make it so much easier for it to happen. Um, so that paired with um, Jen's suggestion, you know, I think one of the things as an educator that I had to learn to also do is learn from my scholars, right? Let them push all the buttons and let them tell me the possibilities that can happen within, you know, these tools. You know, the students are going to discover Oh, yes, I can screen record. OK, how might we screen record some other things that we're working on? So they may even come up with themselves. Oh, we can uh, screen record our Google slide decks or my Google drawing that I created or adding that drawing as a part of, you know, the video inside of um, inside of Flip. Um, even when they submit their Flip video, they can always add in a link to one of their Google tools right there. So, you know, I think it's one of those things at the beginning of the school year. Sometimes we don't know where to start, but sometimes having it open is the best thing because we can all learn together. And I see Nicole is giving a big shout out, Flip in Google Classroom. She must be using that in her classroom. Thanks for tuning in live on LinkedIn, Nicole. Um, now, we both, well, we all know that kids can learn without grades, but it's almost impossible to learn without formative assessment. So let's talk about student feedback and assessment. How might you use Flip in Google Classroom to gather feedback or assess student learning and progress. Any strategies that you've used that you want to share? Um, I, I could start off. Um, so I wanted to also mention, I think this applies to both questions you had uh, earlier. Um, one of the tips is also scheduled uh, assessments. You can schedule these things to go out at a specific time. So it's just an efficiency tip for a teacher. You could schedule your flip assessment or your flip activity in Google Classroom um, whenever you think about it. So you just like, oh, I'm going to do this great, great idea. You can create it, schedule it, it's in a draft, and then you can send it later. Um, but in order to answer your question, how might you use flip in Google Classroom to gather feedback? I love, love the fact that, again, you can integrate these two things, but specifically for authentic assessment for English language learners, I, I saw a comment from Jason, I think it was, they are communicating, they are using their speaking skills, and that's what we want to assess, right? We want to give them the opportunity to provide authentic assessment opportunities, like talking to the camera and answering a specific prompt, right? Um, that I think that is super valuable because kids not only can re-listen to what they're saying, but they're, they're, they're auto-evaluating themselves before they actually hit submit. And that is huge because you don't have to be doing that yourself as an educator. They're already engaged and they are, they want to give their best. So Flip provides that platform and that opportunity for them to be able to do that. So authentic assessment for speaking activities for English language learners is one of my go-tos. Did, did you see both Jen and I both like, yes, oh, when you said that? I, I have, I, I have a, a mom story even. So with my three boys, they're all in French immersion. So their school is primarily French and they learn English as well, right up here in Canada. And um, when they were in first and third grade, my third grader, Bennett, would come home every day and he'd have to read. He'd have to read to an adult for 20 minutes. So, But I've got three kids, two in the first grade, one in the third grade. It was chaotic. I'm trying to get dinner ready. I pick them up from daycare. I've had a long day myself. And he'd be like, Mama, I got to read to you. And I was like, I, I don't know. So I decided to make him his own topic and flip. And I said, okay, here, Bennett, every day, because you want to get it done. And this is, bear in mind, this is also the year that this child had received an ADHD diagnosis. And he knew I have to come home. There's structures. Every day I'm going to come home. I'm going to go on to flip. And I'm going to read what the teacher sent home. And then he would, I would go in and after the first or second time I showed her how to set it up and I go in and be like, you ready? He's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm trying it again. The, the first read wasn't good enough. And he would go. And this is a kid who never liked homework, who really felt, you know, that school was really, it was really challenging for him. He said, no, I want to do it. And at the end of the year, one May, I went in, he was doing, he's laughing. And I thought for sure he's on YouTube or something. I said, Benny, you need to be doing things. He's like, I am doing my things. I'm, re I'm listening to my videos from back in October. I sounded so terrible. Look at the difference between today, mama, and back then. And I was like, oh my gosh. And these are like primary students, right? Third grade, he's doing this. And I thought, this is beautiful. Told his teachers. And now to this day, eighth, he's going to the eighth grade. 
And to this day, when they have really long paragraphs because of the executive functioning, sometimes he'll only get you know, two sentences out because his mind or his fingers are on you know, sentence one or two, but his mind's on sentence 12. So they'll be like, Bennett, did you have any more to, to talk about here? It's like, well, yeah. And they have topics open just for the single student to be like, talk about it here and they can assess them. So that, that idea of it's not just the product, but those conversations and observations that we can have with our students. And this tool empowers our students to be able to share their voice in that way when we can't be everywhere at once. It was just, to me, it just filled my heart with such joy. And that's when I knew that the gold of, of Flip, it was to me, it, it was amazing. I'm so glad you share that because, um, Journey, if I have a minute to share, I have a very similar story with my own son. We were, you know how they give you the reading practice, like you said, every 20 minutes every day, 20 minutes every day, right? So we would do it like right, right around bedtime. And, you know, he likes to read, but it's like, oh, I got to read again, right? So I said, why don't we create a um, podcast show? And so we call it bedtime story time with in my son's name. Right. And so once he saw like that format, like, oh, it's an actual show and I get to be the star of my own show and read my stories. Loved it. And every night we I have episodes of this with flip with the flip camera on my mobile because it was so simple to use. And then he was like, oh, let's put the stickers in here. Let's do this. So there you go. That, another mom example. <laughs> Beautiful, yeah. beautiful, you know, and, and what I'm hearing is, you know, students have the opportunity when they can listen back to themselves to have that moment for them to self assess for them to self correct. We don't always need to be the lead person providing that feedback, they can provide that feedback to themselves as well. And if um, some people who are tuning in, if you don't know, we have amazing features right inside of flip, we have an immersive reader that can help students read the text that's within the topic, change it to another language, um, highlight you know, specific lines of text if they jump down to line 12 when they're reading line two, right? Um, but in addition to that, we've embedded something called reading coach and reading progress. And so now the students can actually read that text aloud. So, you know, you can take that 20 minute reading text, put it inside of the flip topic, have the student read, it will record them as they are reading and give it, give the students feedback on their reading. So, you know, our mission at FLIP is to make learning fun and empowering. And I think the two examples that you just shared really taps into how we can really make learning, which is an everyday thing, right? You know, I wake up and I think about what am I going to learn today? And I just have to be open yeah. to the possibilities. I learn every single second. And for our students to be able to also realize that everything in life is a learning moment and that podcast, yes, the podcast is fun, but the podcast is also helping your child also learn or your student, Jen, that you said, or, you know, is reading the homework, you know, it's not only to, to do the homework for that day, but that's also helping to him to improve his reading skills as well. So we know student um, ownership and agency is everything. And thank you so much for sharing those examples. Now, I know we've kind of, you know, gone through lots of ideas, but I want to know, since this has been such a great conversation with so many insightful ideas for educators to take the, into their classrooms this school year, any final thoughts for our audience today? I would say leverage the student creativity as well. Like if you're going to let them play and you have a, a few things that you've done with them, let them say, hey, you know what else we could use this for? And, and leverage those ideas. Like we don't need to hold all of that knowledge. And they come up with such wonderful, wonderful stuff. We did um, a walkthrough with student art that we have in the Learning Commons. And one of the students is like, I, I really want people to understand what this is about. So we actually had them record their voice. We put the little QR code that's right there in Flip. It's all built in. And we put it beside the artwork so students can come with their own devices, scan, and then hear the artist speaking about the artwork on display throughout the school. And it's so powerful to have that voice there and it, for our students to tell the story of their creative process. So, And that was something that they came up with. And I'm like, yep, let's run with it. Let's do this. So I love that. Let, let, them, let them steer the ship. Absolutely. I totally agree. I think that's one of the best tips ever because as a teacher, you get the you get the opportunity to not, not only see their creativity, but you get a peek into how their brain works. And that gives you such wealth of knowledge for you to plan your lessons and your activities that you know they're going to be engaged with. So 
definitely do that. Absolutely. So thank you both. For those who are watching, if you can hold on for just a few more minutes, we will have a live demo so that you can quickly see how you can link your Google Classroom to your flip group and then post your flip topics to Google Classroom. So if you notice, I'm right inside of flip.com. I'm going to go ahead and log into my platform. All right, we are in just like that. And we are going to create a new group. So I'm just going to choose all ages for the moment, and I'm going to call this one Google Classroom Flip Fun. All right. And then we can choose a lovely banner. We have tons of beautiful banners here. And now our group is created. For those who might not know, you have unlimited groups. You can create a group for anything. And what you'll see here in this modal is that now you're able to share your group. And one option is to share it with your group in Google Classroom. So I'm going to click, click Google Classroom. But the first step you need to do is link your Google account. Okay, so I'm going to click here. I'm going to choose my Google account. It's going to ask me some permissions. And once I've allowed that permission, it has now linked my Google Classroom with my Flip account. So now I can choose a class that I have that I want to share that group to. So I'm going to choose my Savvy Educator class. And just like that, my class is now linked. So if I go to students here, now I can see that I can sync in my roster, all right? And now my students are now all in the roster. Now, if we wanted to share a topic uh, with our class, I'll just create a new one really quickly, and I'm going to call it Back to School Intro for Families, all right? Um, please introduce your family and tell us something you love to do together. All right. All right. So I can add in any elements. I'm going to just choose a quick Giphy. Let's look for some family fun here. Um, lots of options. <laughs> this one looks cool. All right. And now I'm going to post the topic. All right. So now when you see posting the topic, here is that lovely Google Classroom icon. I can click share to Google Classroom. You see another window has popped up. I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. Um, I'm not even sure if it's actually showing on the screen um, right now. But we after choosing that, you would choose a class and then choose an action. So I'm going to go ahead and create an assignment. And I will title the assignment the same thing, back to school intro. And after that, you can add in instructions. And one thing we highly recommend is in your instructions, tell the students once they are finished their flip um, video to come back to Google Classroom and click submit so that um, the educator and the student will see that the assignment is complete. All right. So now that I have um, my assignment created, I'm just going to put that it's ungraded. I'm going to give it a due date a week from today, and then I will assign. All right. So now we are going to view that in our Google Classroom. And hopefully you can see that now. I think another window popped up on the screen. Um, but as I went through those steps, here is our new assignment, Back to School Intro, right inside of Google Classroom. Um, you can see the students that are in the class. It's an ungraded assignment. And here's the instructions telling them, don't forget to click Submit once they are done. And that flip assignment is right there linked. The students click on it, and they're right inside of their flip assignment. Easy as one, two, three, um, which we absolutely love. So before we leave, we do have three resources to keep in your back pocket for this school year. The first one is tips and best practices that can be found in our educator inspiration section of our blog. Um, so 
we're going to head on over to um, our educator toolkit right now. And what you'll see here is resources to help you get started with Flip. We even added in ideas to help you all year long. So if we click on uh, elementary and hopefully um, we'll be able to see these populate. Here we go. Here are wonderful ideas for the elementary grade level to be able to use this year in your classroom. And so on that blog page, you will see that there's ideas for elementary, secondary, and also higher education. Um, in addition to that, if we go to our blog, you'll also see that we have incredible articles. So we just came out with a new article about new ways to leverage AI in your classroom. If you're not talking AI with your uh, educator friends, this is something you should be talking about. This article will let you know about some wonderful features we have inside of Flip called Topic Copilot, which can help you generate um, highly engaging topics on the fly, but also Bing Chat. We just announced that those Microsoft 365 accounts will have Bing Chat Enterprise available to them uh, to utilize. But never fear, if you do not have an M365 educator account, you can create a personal account for free with Microsoft and use Bing Chat to help you plan. And our friend, Feli, she has some wonderful tips online. So check out that blog for you to see how to leverage AI in your classroom this year. In addition to that on the blog, you'll also notice that we try to highlight incredible educators. So we also have an educator spotlight with our friend, Melissa Hayes. You can read a little bit about her as well as click on that video and learn how she's using Flip in her classroom. We have more inspiring conversations coming up next month as well as getting started sessions for anyone new to Flip. So just go over to aka.ms forward slash Flip events, or if you're on the Flip homepage, you can click on events and you'll see here that we have such wonderful events coming up, um, whether you can watch live or even on demand. And we're honored to have some incredible speakers and organizations joining us almost every week to inspire inspire and empower your scholars, such as Peter and Paul Reynolds celebrating International Dot Day. You'll also see Jenna Bush Hager for our 9-11 day of service and talking about the power of good deeds. Um, we'll also have a series with the Intrepid Museum and we will celebrate Be Who You Are Day with Todd Parr. So much to do. Just head over to aka.ms forward slash flip events and register your class. Also, to continue your learning and connect with our community, please join the Think It, Flip It group, where we will have a group to share ideas and resources on how to use Flip in your classrooms. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with that group, all you would do is click on group, click join a group, type in Think It, Flip It, and once we are in there, you'll see there's tons of topics that educators are sharing about. So we invite you to share your own ideas and also learn from our global community. Well, that's all for today. But remember, the learning never ends. And we are here on this journey with you. I'm your host, Renee Armand. And on behalf of Flip and our amazing guests, Jen Giffen and Natalia Lemoyne Hernandez, Thank you so much for spending your time with us and we'll see you next time. Go out and empower every voice.